Now, if there's one story that's all about resilience and seizing every opportunity despite challenges, it's that of Dane Smith. He's achieved so much in his short life from starting a business, a podcast, and doing so much more. Dane, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to be chatting to you. I walked in and you had the most radiant smile. You came in here with such good energy and I saw your Instagram. It's, okay. it's a bit spicy. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for this opportunity yeah. um, to come in and tell my story to your, to your viewers. It's really such an honor. I'm so happy to be here with you because when I read through your story, it's, it's such a, a story of power for me. I think there's a lot of different avenues that you ventured into your life, but I kind of want to start very much at the beginning of what brought you to Cape Town. Mm -hmm. And I think a big part of that was you being retrenched without compensation. And that was a big part of that. Can you take us through that, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic? What was going through your mind when that happened? Yeah, oh my gosh. The, I think I, everyone can attest to this. The COVID pandemic just came by surprise. Like you see, it was, there, was, there were stories. I was actually out of the country when it happened. Yeah. And um, I was in Asia. So it was like, oh, you know, these things only happen this side of the world. Yeah. So when we came back, life was kind of normal we were anticipating something would happen and then the news because at the time I worked for um, an airline and it was all over the news that oh, we hectic. were closing down so it was really like such a shock to me I was like what's happening my life just li literally flashed yeah. in front of my eyes and um, so that was that we we lost our jobs there was we had to figure it out basically mm -hmm. And um, I took some time, my fam I, my, my, I immediately moved back home. My family came over, yeah. they were like, Dane, it's time to come back home. <laughs> <laughs> leave this life, come back Yeah, here. leave this life, we know, you, you, we know you're an independent, but yeah. you know, now you can come and you know, figure it out. And I think that really helped me. That was, I was so grateful to my family for that mm -hmm. opportunity because in that, I was able to start the podcast then. I was interning um, at my friend's startup agency mm -hmm. in the digital space. And I was like, what is, I had an idea of what it was, but I didn't understand it. So she was like, friend, come, you know, and come and learn. And I was like, wow, this is so amazing yeah. that, you know, my friend would just take me from, literally from nothing because I had no idea. So I interned at her agency and that kind of just propelled. So when you say you intern, I think uh, it's always nice to have a friend that's willing to help you out, especially in times where you feel very lost. Yes. It's very important to hold on to those friends. I hope you're still friends with that friend. A hundred percent. She is my great Judy. I'm glad. <laughs> when, when you went into the digital marketing space, because that's kind of where you are now in graphic mm -hmm. design, um, did you ever think that was going to be something that you'd be interested in? At the time, because at the time I was, I was just trying to fill up my schedule. Mm -hmm. You can imagine. Just do something. Yes, because you can imagine losing your job, having a, a set schedule yeah. now to like, well, what's today going to be? <laughs> <laughs> so it gave me a sense of purpose. So I really like threw myself in it. I upskilled a lot mm -hmm. um, and I got a, a better sense of it. I was able to, um, you know, utilize those skills and, yeah. and see w what I enjoyed within, um, you know, the digital space. So... So yes. I think when, when we look at, at internships, yes. people sometimes frown upon it because they're like, oh my gosh, I have to spend like a year of my life doing this thing. A lot of the time there's no pay. Yes. But the experience is something that you cannot quantify. What is the one thing that you really learned and about yourself in that process? Besides your skill for mm -hmm. graphic design and digital marketing, your personal growth, what was the biggest thing that you learned? I learned that um, I am a hungry individual because in the past, prior to that, I was so set on my mundane routine yeah. life, you know. You get stuck in that cycle. Exactly, yes. And the thing, and, and within that internship, there were so many avenues and I was exposed to so much. Um, I learned that I am interested in doing more, mm. you know. So, and it was a very short um, internship because soon after I, I got a job in the space. Oh, look at you. Yeah, so an, another friend <laughs> as well. So, you know, um, it's also good to cultivate good friendships. So I learned yeah. that I wanted more. And so, like I said, something that I never thought it was, because I, I was like, oh, this is going to be my job and I'm going to retire here. I'm going to see the world and that's going to be yeah. me. You know, so I, I learned that there's more out there for me. I think it's so fascinating that you said that you were so stuck in that routine that it just became like, this is it for me. Mm -hmm. um, and if I'm not mistaken, you were a flight attendant yes, before. Yes. You're traveling all the time. You come back. It's COVID-19. You're stuck in a house. You don't know what to do. And then you go on into this internship and get a permanent position. I think in all of that, do you still have that same ambition as a flight attendant when it came to travel? 
because like that's something you suck all the time. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, oh, I have all these jobs, all these things I'm doing, but do you still have time to travel? I do. I I I travel. Not out of the country, of course, not because yet. I'm not yet, because I'm still <laughs> trying to make that money. But I do. I, I, I visit my friends in other provinces, yeah. um, go to the weddings in other countries. So Swaziland being oh, one beautiful. of them. So I do get the opportunity to, to still travel. So I'm so blessed and grateful that I can still yeah. do that. And one of the things that you've also ventured into, because you've wore many hats and you still do. <laughs> I feel like you're chopping change them if you're sitting here. Everyone laughs about that. <laughs> It's a good thing because I feel like you have to continuously evolve. Like mm -hmm. if you're not evolving, you're just kind of surviving and waiting to die. Exactly. And that's not that's not really living. Yeah. Um, one of the hats that you wear is you've also invested in property for vacation rentals, which has been quite interesting. I think that also helps you with your travel interests as well. Mm -hmm. What has that been like to delve into that area? Because that can be quite complex, especially here in Cape Town. Everybody wants to be here. Yes. There's so many opportunities. What has that been like for you to start that kind of journey? I think that's a great question because that when I moved to Cape Town, and I, I, I saw this opportunity. I read a lot um, on everyone semigrating here and I was yes. like, yes, that's me. I've also semigrated for the opportunity that Cape Town has. And a lot of people look at Cape Town and like, you know, it's a, it's a holiday destination. There's no opportunity from a business perspective. But I was like, oh, hang on. There's so much opportunity here, you know. So with, with saying that is that I... I obviously done research and saw that people are interested in Cape Town and not just from an international, also locally. You know, people plan their years around coming to Cape Town. Mm. So I went out and I pitched the idea to friends like continuously. And you I have a really funny. nice friends. Oh my <laughs> I gosh. Do. I, have, I have the best friends. I just want to say I have the best friends. They're really so interested in what I'm doing as yes. well and they buy into it, which it shocks me all the time when my, when my friends will come back to me and be like, oh, so... What you said, yeah. you know, let's 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 really look at that. So yes, yeah, so that's how that came. Um, I obviously saw there was opportunity here that everyone comes in. I was like, we need to, t and I wasn't trying to make it racial as well. I was just saying that we there's an opportunity for us, mm -hmm. marginalized, to come in and take up space in Cape Town because we've, we've always looked at Cape Town as this um, country yeah. for a certain group of people. But I was like. There is so much opportunity for us mm -hmm. to come in and take up that space from that perspective. So, yeah, so that's how I got into the Airbnb space because, I mean, it brings people to the to Cape Town, yeah. you know, it brings the world to Cape Town. And yeah. I really love that because, first of all, I think that this is a lot of opportunity here for business mm -hmm. and I think creatives alike. Yes. Cape Town is such a hub for that. And I think people sometimes overlook that because Joburg is the business capital of South Africa. But there's so much you can do here and the Airbnb space coming from someone who loves to stay in different places around the Western Cape. I love that for you guys. And I love that your friends bought into it as well. It's making me question my friends. <laughs> <laughs> like, guys, I should need help. <laughs> no, they'll come now that you've put it out there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, one of the other things that you've really like dived into head first, I, I know graphic design is obviously something that you're focused on now and digital marketing. But you mentioned earlier your podcast, Only the Brave. Yeah. Yes. And I love the fact that this platform is specifically for people to share stories. Mm -hmm. For you, what is the importance of storytelling? Oh, so like like you said earlier, you know, I have there's so much I do, there's all these hats I I, I wear and and each of these hats there's a story to tell. Yeah. And what I've learned, especially during COVID, because I was so prior to COVID, I had this hard exterior, like I'm Dane, I'm this traveller. It's like I know what I'm doing. I'm independent and losing my my job. I went into this vulnerable space yeah. and I realized that I have I have something to tell. You know, I can there's a, there's a story to share to inspire someone else. So that's how it came about. And it was also the time with gender based violence when I realized that men being a man myself that's the issue. We, our egos would always take over and we, we'd be too afraid to share stories. Yeah. So I thought, let me create this platform to, for people to share stories. So that's how the podcast came about. Because I was like, the more we can speak about it, the more we can also relate yeah. and we can see the person. So I'm not just looking at um, Delusha, the, the producer. I'm looking at Delusha, the person who has a story to tell. Yeah. You know? So that it. was really the essence of Only Are the there Any stories for you that have really stood out in your first two seasons? Because <clears throat> I, I watched some of it. You did. <laughs> I want to say, you know, not, not to make it all about myself, but <laughs> it was really, it was a learning curve for me. I learned so much about myself. Mm -hmm. So my story was really with my family because for many years, because I lived alone for so long, 
I realized that I was so far removed from them that I needed to tell my story and mm. how I was now reconnecting with my family and also mm. their stories and how you know we've come together so that was a big thing for me yeah it was was being vulnerable too because a lot of my friends came to me they're like I had no idea that that was your life your lived experience and I was like yeah because all you see is this happy day yeah <laughs> but you know I've had such a a journey to where I am so I want to say my story really because it, it helped me dig deep mm. and, and find out who Dane really is. So that was my, you know, that, that story. Um, there's, there's so, there were so many, actually. <laughs> um, I, but I just say, I want to highlight that because that was, it, it kind of spoke to um, what only the brave was about. And I yes. need to be the brave one to share my story. So mm. that stood out for me. Because when I do go back and, and, I, and I listen to that song, I'm like, wow, I can't believe I opened up about those things and I would I would have yeah. never because everybody just like I said thought you know this is Dane he travels it, he, he loves partying and that's it yeah you know so it's interesting because I think more often than not just as human beings we don't want to share our stories we're either embarrassed or we also don't know did that actually happen or did I make it up so I think for you almost like shedding your skin it was also a healing process for you to kind of reconnect with yourself and also to find a way to move forward in the way that's best for you. Because everyone can say, oh my gosh, just chill. Or like, do things this way, do things that way. Sometimes that's not how life works. I think we figure that out <laughs> doing life ourselves. Um, but what I love really about you is the fact that you were not scared to be vulnerable and to share your purpose with people. Um, in, in Throughout that journey, what do you think the one thing is that you look back and you're like, oh, Gosh, I can't believe I shared that. What was the hardest thing for you to have shared? It's definitely um, the story of me moving because I'm I'm am somewhat of a nomad. Mm. So my 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 parents were teenage parents, and I moved to Port Elizabeth with my mom's aunt. Mm. It was that story opening up about that story, and I think it was also important for my mom to to hear the story from my perspective because so many. I, what I've realized is pa parents are so guarded, like, yeah. I've done my best, like, and I was like, I'm, it's not, it's not about you. It's not a reflection on you. It's just me sh sharing my story because that it really it helped shape shape who I am. Yeah, you know, so me sharing because like it was really that in that story that my friends started telling me stuff about their backgrounds, and I was like, mm. wow, you know. So it was that story, um, yeah, me sharing about my, <clears throat> sorry, my move from PE to Joburg meeting this new family my mm. already family um, and having to adjust to now to adjust. that yeah mm. so now it was my mom's family and my dad's family kind of navigating those two worlds yeah you know which was very difficult for me and and the biggest and i think that's why i built that hard exterior mm. and like and covid helped me break those walls down mm. you know, some introspection yeah, introspection mm. like and i just surrendered and like this is that's my story to tell that is my story i could own it mm. so it was I'm glad that you shared that as well and that it also opened up a pathway for your friends to come and talk to you. So surrounding yourself with people who are going to buy into those delusions because <clears throat> I still struggle um, as an entrepreneur <clears throat> with my ideas. <clears throat> Sorry. So I still struggle with my ideas and the fact that I have people who are constantly so supportive who will check up on me and be like, how's this going? Or I... Th I I read this and I think you will you'll benefit from this and that keep and that's the fuel that keeps yeah. me going so it's really so important to curate you know your energy and your circle because that's the driving force so if you're out there and you have these like I never thought I'd I'd, I'd be here I moved yeah. to Cape Town and I was like I'm gonna go and see what this looks like <laughs> I'm gonna try because yeah. you know you you move into a different um, city and everyone has and a lot of people say Cape Town is a clicky place and I was like I'm gonna prove them wrong I've proved everyone wrong. Yeah. So you have to go, like I'm gonna say it again, take up the space and just believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, cause you can, and if, and as crazy as your idea sounds, it's not crazy until it's you've done. achieved it. Yeah. yeah, it's not crazy until it's done. And I like that because you're right. Anything is possible. Um, and I think you're, you're testament to that. Yes. I love your story. I really adore you. I think you're wonderful. I think with all the hats that you wear, I'm surprised it's not sitting on top of the roof. At this point. <laughs> but I'm excited to see you to take on more <clears throat> and also look after yourself in that. Yes. So thank you so much for joining us and for thank sharing you. your message and your story. Um, I don't doubt you're going to touch many people's lives with it. And I'm con very eager to see you step out into the world and yeah. do more. Thank you for having me. And I hope that, um, you know, 
in the future I can I can be of more help you know and we can potentially work together I'm always looking for opportunities so yes call my <laughs> <laughs> <We're sorted. laughs> I'll, I'll call <laughs> No, please do. Um, but yeah, thank you again for coming. It was so wonderful to chat. And I'm sure people will definitely be watching season three of Only the Brave. Yes, please stay tuned, Listen guys. To the podcast and for all the students out there. So you'll be providing us with more resources that we can need. <laughs> thank you so much, Dane. Oh, what a wonderful gentleman that we had here today. It was such a remarkable story and one that really does kind of get into what the hustle is all about, but doing so with lots of risk, but also very calculated ones too. That was Dane Smith on Good Everything.